Part 11, Concrete Placement. Overview. This part of the manual covers the concrete pouring and consolidation process with best applied practices that have been acquired over the years. This information is a valuable resource to help you complete a successful project. Pre-pouring checklist. Extra copies of the following checklist should be made to ensure everything is in order prior to pouring concrete. Checking walls. Make sure walls are straight, plumb, square, and level. Check if corners are square and plumb. Check if top cores of forms have been secured. If there will be a second pour, check if the top of the forms have been covered to avoid concrete filling the interlocking system. Check if string lines have been placed around the perimeter of the wall. Checking wall openings. Check if wall openings are at the correct height elevation. Check if window and door openings are located correctly and if the openings are plumb and square. Check if anchorage for buck material has been provided. Checking reinforcing steel. Check if vertical and horizontal reinforcing steel comply with the specified engineering and or local building code requirements. Check if reinforcing steel bars around the wall openings are installed. Check if reinforcing steel bars for lintels, the window and door headers, are installed and as per the specified engineering local building code requirements. Checking floor connections. Check if all floor connections have been installed, including anchor bolts and Simpson strong tie connections. Check if beam pockets have been provided, if required for the job. Check if sill plate, anchor bolts, and tie-down straps have been located and are clearly marked for wet setting into the concrete. Checking bracing and alignment. Check if alignment and bracing system is properly installed and planking has been secured. Check if all T-joints are braced adequately and properly. Check if all offset joints and stack joints are braced adequately and properly. For bracing systems higher than 10 feet off the supporting surface, make sure to have a proper handrail system installed as per the OSHA requirements in the U.S. or OHSA requirements in Canada. Checking wall penetrations. Check that all penetrations, electric, plumbing, HVAC, dryer vents have been accommodated and all form support has been installed. Checking tool equipment and materials. Make sure you have two working mechanical vibrators on the job site. One will be used to consolidate the concrete during the pour, while the other will act as a standby should the first one break. Make sure the concrete ordered is acceptable for the method of placement. Make sure that you have coordinated and confirmed the delivery times for both the boom pump and the concrete. Make sure you have a blowout kit prepared and ready. Refer to section 11.12. Checking job site. Check that the site is clean and there is enough room for trucks and workers. Safety tips for handling and placing concrete. The following are suggestions, precautions, and safety measures recommended for anyone handling wet concrete. Wear hard hats. Wear a hard hat for head protection. A construction site presents a variety of hazards that can cause serious head injury. Protect your skin. Wet, fresh concrete is very abrasive to the skin. It can cause skin irritations, chemical burns, and prolonged contact can cause third-degree burns. Therefore, we recommend wear waterproof gloves, a long sleeve shirt, long pants, and rubber boots. Use waterproof pads to protect your skin, knees, elbows, or hands from contact with fresh concrete during finishing. Flush eyes and skin that come in contact with fresh concrete immediately with clean water. Rinse clothing saturated from contact with fresh concrete quickly with fresh water. Protect your eyes. Wear full cover goggles or safety glasses with side shields during the concrete pour. Rate of pouring concrete. When fresh concrete is poured into Anvic ICF, it exerts lateral pressures on the sides of the EPS panels. The intensity of this pressure depends on several factors, including the rate of concrete pour, unit weight of concrete, type of cement, concrete slump, concrete temperature, height of the pour, and depth of internal vibration. Amvic ICF blocks have an ultimate forming capacity of 864 pounds per square foot, as tested according to Section 6.4.4 of the Canadian CCMC Technical Guide for Modular Expanded Polystyrene Concrete Forms. This table shows the design lateral pressure for newly placed concrete that should be used for the wall formworks. The pressures are based on the recommendations and formulas given by ACI 347-04. The recommended pour rate for Anvic ICF is between 3 to 4 feet per hour. However, in warm temperatures for Anvic ICF concrete, pour rates of up to 5 feet per hour are possible. Methods and equipment for pouring concrete. Concrete can be placed in several ways depending on the application and job site conditions available. This table summarizes the most common methods for placing concrete in Anvic ICF. Placing concrete with a boom pump. It is highly recommended to use a double S-band or double 90-degree fitting at the discharge point of the pump line. This will help reduce the flow rate of concrete to the desired levels. 
A flexible hose of appropriate length is always recommended for controlling flow rates and for safety issues. Many ICF contractors also use three, two and a half, or two inch reducer fittings with a flexible hose. Although the reducers may make it more convenient to pour the concrete, they can also have the effect of increasing the pressure and flow rate at which the concrete is discharged. It is up to the contractor to use whatever fittings he is comfortable with as long as the concrete is poured at the recommended rates and without damaging the forms. Using a boom pump to pour concrete is the most preferred and efficient method. Discuss your pour thoroughly with your pump operator when you place your order. Make sure the Concrete Ready Mix company has the pump line fittings required, like S-Bend connection, reducers, and flexible hose. Crew size. On pour day, a crew of four is the minimum to work with, plus the pump operator. At least three crew members are needed on the scaffolds, one handling the hose, and two working the vibrator. One crew member is required on the ground for filling and blocking window bucks, cleaning slops, and untangling the electrical cords of the vibrator. A crew of five to six is optimal. Pouring the concrete. Remember, concrete should always be poured at a steady rate and in lifts between three to four feet maximum at a time. Using the recommended pour rates of three to four feet per hour, a typical nine foot high wall should be poured within a minimum span of three hours. If you're using a boom pump, it's important to have the operator dump the pump prime, the sludge that initially comes out of the hose, outside of the forms or back into the pump. Pouring concrete in 90 degree corners. It's advisable to start pouring concrete at a corner and then work your way around the wall parameter in a circular manner. However, corners require special attention during the pour because of their geometry. Corner blocks are always subjected to more lateral pressure due to concrete placement than the straight blocks. The key is to equalize the concrete pressure on both sides of corner blocks as much as possible. The following steps should be followed. Start by pouring concrete at approximately a distance of two to three feet away from the corner center. When filling the walls to the required lift height, make sure to pour concrete at approximately the same rate on both sides of the corner block by moving the pump hose or discharge point in a back and forth rhythm. Concrete should not be poured for a subsequent lift in and around the same corner block until at least an hour has passed. Ensure proper concrete consolidation. Do not allow concrete to accumulate on one side of a corner block at any time. This may cause a blowout during the concrete pour. Pouring concrete around windows, doors, and straight sections. Typically, contractors will start by bringing the boom hose down and filling the bottom of the window bucks first. Each window bottom should be consolidated using a concrete vibrator and then screed it off. Refer to section 11.7 for details on concrete consolidation. Depending on your slump, it's advisable to nail or screw an OSB cap over the openings in the bottom of the window buck to prevent the concrete from bulging up or overflowing when you pour down the sides from above in the next passes. Window and door bucks should not be completely filled on one side at a time. Fill both sides of the opening using a back and forth rhythm. Avoid spilling concrete into the window and door headers, also known as lintels. Pour concrete normally into straight sections up to the required lift height. As you fill the walls to a lintel, ensure a continuous pour along its entire length without creating any cold joints. Proper and adequate concrete consolidation in lintels is of paramount concern. With a two to three inch reducer on the pump hose, it frequently is possible to hold back the concrete briefly by placing your rubber gloved hand over the end of the nozzle and quickly swinging the hose to the other side of the window or door. Stop short of pouring concrete into a second corner by approximately two to three feet. Follow the recommendations we've discussed for concrete placement in corner blocks. Quality control. Slump. It's recommended to perform a field slump test on the first batch of concrete that arrives on the job site. If the slump is too low or too high, then you can immediately inform the concrete supplier to adjust the concrete mix appropriately for the subsequent batches. This will also give a good feel for what the consistency of a proper concrete mix should be like with AMVIC ICF. If a special inspection is required by the local building code, then an engineer will be on the job site and this test may become a requirement, not an option. Compressive strength. It's recommended to randomly retain fresh concrete into proper size cylinders. The cylinders will later be tested by a certified concrete laboratory for compressive strength at 28 days to ensure that concrete used on a specific job site meets the specified compressive strength by the local licensed engineer building code requirements. If a special inspection is required by the local building code, then an engineer will be on the job site. Taking random samples of concrete for compressive strength testing becomes a requirement and again not an option. Concrete consolidation. What is consolidation? Consolidation is the process of compacting freshly poured concrete. Concrete must be consolidated to eliminate stone pockets, honeycomb, and entrapped air. 
mold concrete within the forms and around embedded items, and to ensure reinforcing steel is properly embedded and bonded to the concrete paste. Methods of consolidation. The concrete industry has accepted two types of concrete consolidation, internal and external. Internal consolidation. Mechanically using a proper size immersion type concrete vibrator, also known as a poker or spud vibrators. This is the most preferred method for adequate consolidation. Manually using steel rods and rotting the concrete. This is not a practical method for use with Anvic ICF and does not provide adequate consolidation of the concrete. Ensure that you use the proper size concrete vibrator for adequate concrete consolidation. Using hand rotting to consolidate concrete in Anvic ICF walls should be avoided. External consolidation. This method involves attaching a mechanical vibrating device to the outside of the Anvic ICF forms. Although this method may be acceptable, it is not as effective as internal mechanical vibration. Tapping on the outside of the forms is not an acceptable method of consolidating concrete in Anvic ICF. Using concrete vibrators. Recommended specifications. Vibrators consist of a vibrating head connected to a driving motor by a flexible shaft. Inside the head, an unbalanced weight connected to the shaft rotates at high speed, causing the head to revolve in a circular orbit. The motor can be powered by electricity, gasoline, or air. The vibrating head is usually cylindrical with a diameter ranging from 3 quarters to 7 inches. The dimensions of the vibrator head, as well as its frequency and amplitude in conjunction with the workability of the mixture, affect the performance of a vibrator. This table provides the recommended specifications for concrete vibrators used with Envic ICF. Guidelines for Concrete Consolidation Recommended Practices Consolidation must be done immediately after fresh concrete is poured and before it sets. Completely immerse the vibrator head in concrete during consolidation. Insert vibrator vertically and let it sink as quickly as possible under its own weight to the desired depth. Hold the vibrator 5 to 15 seconds, then slowly lift up approximately 3 inches per second, staying behind the trapped air's upward movement. As shown in this diagram, move the vibrator and reinsert at a distance 1.5 times the radius of action. Allow the vibrator to penetrate 6 inches into the previous layer to ensure proper bond and eliminate cold joints. Pour concrete into the walls in lifts of 3 to 4 feet per hour. For proper consolidation, each of the lifts should be poured in layers of the same thickness as the vibrator head length minus the depth of penetration into the previous layer, typically about 6 inches. Stop vibration when the surface becomes shiny and there are no more breaking air bubbles. Practices to avoid. Do not use the vibrator to move concrete laterally. This causes segregation. The vibrator head should not touch the sides of the ICF forms. It should only be in contact with concrete. Do not immerse the vibrator head down the same path more than once. Do not run the vibrator in the air for more than 15 seconds. This will cause overheating. Avoid sticking the vibrator head into the top of the concrete heap. To flatten a concrete heap, insert the head around the parameter. Do this carefully to avoid segregation. Ensure the vibrator flexible shaft has enough length to match the wall height being poured. Make sure there are enough workers for placing and consolidating concrete during the pour. A two-man crew should be handling the concrete vibrator and immediately following the person working the pump hose as each layer is poured. Finishing the concrete pour. If a second story will be constructed above the height being poured, stop filling the top course of block at least two inches below the block top. Vibrate it thoroughly, but leave it rough so that the next pour will have a good mechanical bonding surface. An excellent bond will develop by leaving the concrete unfinished. If this is the final course of block that will be poured, then the concrete should be troweled down smoothly, recommending the use of a laser level at this point, and anchor bolts should be put into the wet concrete after finishing. We recommend you wet set the anchor bolts into the screeded top off the wall and install the mud sill after the concrete has set. Mud sills or top plates can either be installed to be full width and extend all the way to the surface of the blocks, 13 or 11 inches, or it can be recessed within the block cavity so that the EPS foam extends unbroken to the rafter tails. It gets very busy towards the end of the pour. Mark anchor bolt locations on the sides of the form before the pour and place them on the scaffolds near where they will be installed. After the pour, recheck wall straightness and adjust. After pouring is complete, immediately check the corners again for plumb and the wall for straightness. There is a short window in which the bracing system can push and move the wall. If realignment is required, adjust the bracing to do so. 
Have three to four spare braces ready in the event you need to quickly install an additional adjustable brace to push the wall in an area that you didn't expect. Preparing for a blowout. In the unlikely event of a blowout, prepare a kit which contains the following. A few pieces of OSB or plywood 24 by 24 inches or so. A container of sheetrock screws. A fully charged electric driver drill. And a portable ladder sufficient to reach whatever height is involved. Before all pours, brief the crew on how to handle a blowout. If a blowout occurs, the groundman should wave off the pump and vibrator. If the foam is only bulged and not separated from the webs, install a piece of form support at the location. Use an extra brace for that purpose. If the EPS is broken, remove it, clean out the concrete, and reinsert the broken piece of EPS so that it is flush with the wall. Install one or more pieces of OSB with multiple screws into intact webs or bucks on either side of the failure location. 